I'm Lawson, and today we're talking about peace. Piece of cake? It smells so good. Uh, and does anybody have a fork? Peace, Lawson, not peace. Yeah, oh, I know. P-E-A-C-E -E on Earth and all that. I just wanted an excuse to eat cake. Anyhow, at least there are cookies in today's story about P-E-A-C-E -E peace, as told to me by my young friend Raj. Now Raj lives like five houses down from the school. So every morning at 7.35, he heads out the front door and down the sidewalk. And every morning at 7.36, Mr. Samson beelines down the driveway with his coffee to get his newspaper. Because I guess some people still actually get newspapers. He claims it's the smell of the ink. And at precisely 7.37, Jade Zimmerman runs through with her pesky dog, Thunderbolt. Now Raj usually gets stuck right between them. Then Mr. Samson complains, that dog of yours pees on my mailbox. And Jade snaps, that mailbox is an eyesore. Cause Mr. Samson's mailbox needs a little bit of work. <laughs> and it's still decorated for Christmas. So Raj takes some extreme measures. He yells, stop. But Mr. Samsung shouts at Jade, your dog is killing my flowers. And she yells back, I'm voting you out of the neighborhood. Raj finally makes a break for it, but their words come flying after him. And it happens like that again and again. Raj tells his mom, they're driving me nuts. And she says, maybe you can help. So Raj makes a plan. And the next morning, he's ready with treaty treats. They've got chocolate chips for Mr. Samson with healthy oatmeal for Jade. And while his neighbors are busy chewing, Raj offers to help Mr. Samson take down the Christmas decorations and plant some daffodils around it. And Raj offers Jade a bag of dog treats so she can coax Thunderbolt to do his business somewhere else. And then they all high 30. And at last, there's a little piece for Raj's morning trek to school. So kids, never leave your Christmas decorations up past Valentine's Day. But always do remember that peace is proving you care more about each other than winning the argument. Hey! Aha! Ooh! Time for a little peace? Okay. It's so good. I'll see you guys next time. I love you so much. Hi friends, it's Miss Rachel, and I am so glad that you are joining us for online elementary large group. Please let us know that you're watching by commenting in our comments today. Maybe wave or give a high five. That would be awesome. Also, please be looking later on today for an email, parents, from Miss Christine or Miss Emily with our God time cards and what's happening in children's ministry. We hope to see you very soon. Have a great day. Now, let's start large group. Hey everyone, my name is Miss Drew and I'm so glad that you made it to another week of elementary large group. Have you ever played the game The Floor is Lava where you have to hop from chair to chair to avoid stepping on the lava floor? It's one of my favorite games. It's a little stressful because you don't want to fall into the burning hot lava, right? But if you can make it across, you can find some peace. All month long we're talking about what it means to have peace, or really how we can make peace with others. Peace is proving you care more about each other than winning an argument. That means you can disagree with people without being mean to them. You can be okay with not always winning or getting your way. Remember, God made peace with us when he sent Jesus to be our savior. We can follow his example by making peace with others and treating them the way we want to be treated. You know what? 
why don't we all try and keep out of the lava together? Maybe we can find some peace if we can make it safely across. Let's play an at-home version of this game, Bridge Over Boiling Lava. Don't worry, wherever you are standing or sitting right now is an island. But all the other parts of the floor in that room that you're in right now is lava. Your challenge is to use items around you to create a bridge to help you get safely into another room in your house that's closest to where you are. Remember, only the floor of the room you're in right now is lava. So if someone is in your house in another room, they can help you by tossing items to you to help you build your bridge. You can use pillows, blankets, towels, anything you got to build a bridge over the lava in your room. You'll have 60 seconds to safely and creatively make it to the other room. Ready, set, go. And time. The floor is no longer lava and you can come back to your screens in here now. How close did you get to making it to the other room? Building bridges is hard work. Some of you have even had help and worked as a team to build your bridge, which is awesome. Have any of you ever been part of a team before? Like maybe you played a sport like soccer or basketball, or maybe you were part of a group project at school or a team playing a video game. If you've ever played on a team, then you know how important it is for everyone to work together and do their part. In fact, that's the way God made us to live in every part of our lives. He made us to live in peace with each other. Our Bible story video today will tell us more about that. But first, let's go to God and set our sacred large group space together. Hi friends. It's now time to set our sacred large group space. When we do this, we are reminding ourselves that we are in this space that we are creating right now together. And we're not just here together, but we're here with God. And so each one of these candles that I'm going to light represents God. They represent God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And so as I light each candle and we set our space, I want you to say out loud at home with me, God the Creator, and then God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit. Are you ready? God the Creator, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And with that, friends, our sacred large group space is set. Let's hear our Bible story for today. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story the epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Colossians, chapter three, verse 15. In a letter written to the Colossian church, the apostle Paul wrote, let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts. As parts of one body, you were appointed to live in peace and be thankful. Now let's see what that truth may look like played out in our lives today. Katie wiped the sweat from her forehead and took a long drink from her water bottle. How is it this hot in April? She looked back at the long patch of scrubby ground on the corner lot by Miss Watson's house. Her friends, Caleb and Nona, were both pulling weeds too. I thought we'd be done before lunch. It'll take us days to clear out all this brush. 
All three kids lived in the same neighborhood and were in Mr. Benson's seventh grade social studies class. It had been Katie's bright idea to start a neighborhood garden for their community service project. Well, we have to finish, unless you want to fail social studies. Even though the friends had been working for a couple of hours already, they'd only cleared the brambles from a small patch of land at the corner. Even when we finish pulling weeds, we still have to dig up the dirt. Yeah, and plant the seeds and water them and stuff. Look, we just need to get it done. I really want an A, okay? Let's use what we've cleared so far and pick one thing to plant. Sunflowers! What? They're big. They're bold. They'll brighten up the whole neighborhood. I don't want to plant flowers. Katie did a quick search on her phone for backup. Plus, you aren't supposed to plant sunflowers until summer. That's a big, fat fail for class. Well, it feels like summer. We should plant a pumpkin patch. I mean, how awesome will it be to have all the little kids come right here to get their pumpkins in the fall? That's like half a year away. You guys. Plus two words, pumpkin pie. Uh, two more words is disgusting. Katie jumped right between her sparring friends. You guys, we need something easy that will actually grow now before the end of the school year. I looked it up. She held up her phone and showed them a picture of small flowers with viney green stalks. What are those even? You have got to be kidding me. Katie checked her screen again. Petunias. We can plant them right here by the stop sign. They grow super fast, we'll get a good pick for class, and then we're done. I thought the whole point of this was to help people. Petunias are nice. This is ridiculous. Something that small will just get overrun by all the weeds we haven't pulled. You got a better idea? Yeah, sunflowers. You know, something big and beautiful. Or bumpkins! Katie ripped off her gardening gloves and hurled them into the dirt. Fine. Do your own community service project. You're quitting the garden? It's not a garden, it's a weedy dirt patch. I'll do my own project. Katie grabbed her water bottle and her tools and stalked off. I cannot believe them. At home, Katie kicked off her muddy shoes and hurled her dirty gloves on the floor. How'd it go, sweetie? Awful. We hardly cleared any weeds and Nona and Caleb wouldn't listen to my idea about what to plant. It is a pretty big project. I'm doing my own. Isn't it a group thing? Nona and Caleb don't even care about the grade. They want to do all this stuff with pumpkins and sunflowers and stuff we'll never even finish. I get it. It's a lot easier to keep it small, but it's up to you whether you want to hold on to being angry or go make this right with your friends. They started it. Look, God designed you to be at peace on the inside, peace with him and with others. Okay, okay, yeah, I just, I don't know where to start. You could start with more help. I bet Miss Watson would be willing to lend a hand since that weedy patch is right by her yard. Maybe. Oh, and Mrs. Garcia is always trying to start a garden in their backyard, but she says it's too shady. Maybe she'd like to help. Katie nodded slowly. After lunch, she took a trip around the neighborhood and spotted Caleb shooting some hoops in his driveway. Then she dragged him across the street to knock on Nona's door. You realize I don't want to talk about this? I don't want to talk about this. Just give me a minute, both of you, please. Caleb and Nona stared at Katie, arms crossed. I'm really sorry. I got so stuck on making an A that I didn't listen to your ideas. I was just so hot and frustrated. Katie's friends waited. I talked to Mrs. Watson and the Garcias and that family with the little kids by the stop sign. They all want a garden, like a big vegetable garden. They want to help us. Really? We could clear the lot pretty fast with that much help. And we can plant everything, tomatoes and beans and carrots and sunflowers and pumpkins and whatever people want to eat. We'll have to help keep it up over the summer though. All the way to pumpkin season. Exactly. Okay, I'm in. Caleb gave Katie a high five. Then they both turned to Nona. She hesitated. Okay, sure, but you're not gonna get me to eat pumpkin pie, because sweet potato is way better. Deal. The Garcias can help out tomorrow afternoon, so we can get back to it then. Katie headed home, relieved that she was on good terms with her friends again and at peace on the inside. She was living out the truth of Paul's words. Let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts. As parts of one body, you were appointed to live in peace and be thankful.
God made us to live in peace with each other. And let's be real, that's not always easy. There are times when we get upset or angry. There are times when the people around us aren't super nice to us. On our own, it would be tough for us to live in peace with each other. But we're not on our own. We have a relationship with Jesus, and that's what gives us true peace. It makes us want to make peace with others because we remember how Jesus made peace with us. With his help, we can build a bridge and make peace with others. We don't have to be separated from someone we've disagreed with. We can walk across the lava and find a way to make things right with them. Remember, we can make peace with others. Think about it for a minute. Who do you need to make peace with? Is there a brother, sister, or other family member who you've been fighting with? Maybe a friend or someone on your sports team. Maybe someone at school or in your neighborhood. Talk to God about it. Ask him to help you make peace. See if you can make the first move to fix the problem. And if you don't know what to do to make peace, remember, you can always ask someone like your parents, a teacher, a pastor, or another adult you trust. Our memory verse is a great reminder to make peace with others. Let's read it together. So let us do all we can to live in peace and let us work hard to build up one another. Romans 14, 19. Before you go, let's pray and ask God to help us make peace with others. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus so that we can be at peace with you. Thank you for making us work together like a body or a team with each of us having a part to play. Please help us follow your example and choose to make peace with the people around us. We love you and we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. This week, let's do everything that we can to live in peace. I'll see you back here next Sunday. Bye, friends. You're my courage. I don't have to be afraid. You're my fortress. No matter what comes my way. You're my treasure forever. Yes, we'll be together. Yeah.